Hey everyone, so today is going to be a get ready with me, which if you don't know what that means is when someone does their makeup and you're watching them get ready, so you're basically getting ready with them. So steps I always do first are toner. Favorite in because it's wet on my face. It takes long to dry unless I get the job done myself. Then is the moisturizer. I use like that much, which is probably too much, but I need the moisturization, so what can I say? And so I try to avoid my eyebrows because I do those before my foundation. The third step for foundation is primer. I use I have a lot of primer too. I use this Anastasia Anastasia eyebrow powder in the shade medium brown and I use this Anastasia eyebrow brush also and I use this paint brush I don't even know what it's for it's just a tiny detail paint brush I guess which is what I use to carve out my eyebrows and then I use the Tarte Shape Tape to carve out my eyebrows. Since I am clearly missing a lot of my eyebrows, I use the golden ratio to mark them. You start at the end of your nose, so this is where your eyebrows should start. And then the middle of your nose, in the middle of your eyeball, this is where your arch should be, right here. And then the end of your nose and the end of your eye is where it should end. So right there. So one, two, the golden ratio. So I use the lighter powder to mark the eyebrows because this is a little bit darker but that's what I used to fill them in. So I'll just take some of that powder and mark and then fill in and carve out. So. See here, I have marked my eyebrows for where I want to apply product. And then I'll take the darker one and fill them in. Now look at that difference. And I find that powder looks the most natural because for a while I was using pencils and while they look more natural than a dip brow looks, powders look the most natural because of the texture. They're just really soft and um, feathery looking, I guess. I don't know if you can tell. It's very um, feathered and looking and it doesn't look too harsh, but it's also depending on the shape you create. Also, I used to use darker browns on my eyebrows and um, now looking back I realize how harsh they were in reality. The obvious solution was to use lighter toned browns and also cooler tone, not warm, depending on what it is. But obviously if you have black hair, um, you can pretty much use anything but I feel like black eyebrows is, are really really harsh but you know maybe the it takes the right person to execute black eyebrows. <laughs> Carve them out, and then I move on to foundation. So I'll take my trusty shade tape in the shade Fair. And my little paint, paint brush turned makeup brush to carve them out. I start right under the arch, working it outward and blending, and then I bring it to the front. I find that that's the best way to evenly distribute products and achieve that cleaned up look that I want.
Okay, that is the way I like my eyebrows typically, and sometimes they don't come out perfectly, and they're probably not even perfect right now, but this is about shape and fullness. I like sometimes they're way too thick, and I don't know how that happens when I have eyes to see what I'm doing. But I just I guess it just happens. <laughs> Or, or maybe so with the pencil, it was easier to get carried away opposed to the powder, which is easier to control because it's softer. It's time to even my skin tone out and get rid of these dark circles and discolored mouth. One thing I don't like about medium and full coverage foundation is that it covers my beauty mark. This is shade 140. I use four pumps because I felt like anything less wasn't enough coverage. Then I'll use my finger and mix it around and then apply it. So I typically start with my mouth area because it's the most discolored. Well, it's the only thing discolored really. And I want the most coverage there so I can even it out with the rest of my face. And then I'll add it to my cheeks and nose and up on the forehead and I'll use my beauty blender to blend it all out that is what my foundation looks like when I'm done evening out my skin tone yes it does look crazy before the entire process is finished but that's the process. <laughs> so, when I get the concealer, and concealing, blush, bronzer, highlight, everything, then I look more normal. Or more balanced and evened out. Most of the time, I just take my NARS concealer and start concealing. So now it's time for one of the best parts of uh, my makeup routine, baking. And I use this Kat Von D powder for that. This is what I was using for a while, like I had actually ran out of another container of this. And then I was using Laura, but I think that one's running out too. I also used the Too Faced Born This Way, but I feel like, like it's, it, it makes your skin really, really soft and smooth, but it has flashback that I didn't really know about until I looked at my pictures that I took with flash. So, um, back to the Kat Von D, because I'm pretty sure it doesn't have flashback. If memory serves correct, yeah, I think I would remember <laughs> that it does. That it, if it did have flashback, I don't know. So then I take the Beauty Blender and load it up with powder. And bake under my eyes. And this is done to prevent creasing and lock in the foundation and also to give a nice smooth effect. And yes, I do bake a lot because I don't like the effect. So that's what all the powder is. It's baking. under my eyes and then I also just set the rest of my face with the same powder with the big fluffy brush this is a brush from Real Techniques it's just like a big powder brush so then I'll just dip it in powder and tap off all the excess that is on the brush because that's a lot of powder okay then I just Mm -hmm. 
And then I don't really wait five minutes. It's probably less, like two or so. And I uh, knock off the, uh, or dust off the under eyes. Because I don't feel like waiting that long. Plus then it will look too powdery and dry. So I dust it off before. The typical five minutes. Then, the next step, I look a little washed out, so I'd say it's bronzing slash contouring. But honestly, really, uh, I really only bronze my face. I don't really contour too much because I feel like it looks good enough. Like, it looks all warmed up, and, and my cheekbones are already pretty prominent and pronounced. They're just, they're there. As you can see, the shape is just naturally there. So I use this little brush in my techniques because I like the shape of it a lot. And I'll use my, I used to use Hula Bronzer by Benefit all the time. Uh, but then I started using my NARS palette, which is called the Board de Plague or Plage. It's probably Plague, right? P-L-A-G-E. Board de Plague eyeshadow palette. Uh, sorry, no, this is a uh, highlighting and bronzing palette. To bronze my face, and I use this shade right here because this one is a little too orange and too dark. So I'll just take it like that. Just touch the and apply. So after bronzing my whole face up like that, I guess I do contour a little bit with this Lorac Pro Contour Palette. But I don't contour where you typically would, which is like behind it, back in the cheek area. I just contour under my jawline and my nose because I feel like the NARS bronzer is too warm for my nose. Maybe it's not. I just That's what I think. So I just take some of the contour color. As you can see, it's almost gone because I use it all the time. And contour it under my chin area. If it's too much, just blend it out with that powder brush. And then I'll use a little brush right here to contour my nose. So I'll just dip it in there and go right underneath and on the sides. Next up is blush, which in my opinion makes a really big difference because bronzer and highlighter are one thing, but then blush pulls it all together, especially depending on the color and your skin tone and everything. So my favorite br blush right now is Madly by NARS. So it's just like a nice little brownie type blushy <laughs> color. So I'll take this, I think it's a duo fiber brush, right? It's a stippling brush, also known as a duo fiber brush, but I take this and swirl it in the blush and tap off the excess and apply it to the cheeks. And what I always do also is take the beauty blender again and the powder and cut, it's known as cutting, cut under the cheek or, or bake under the cheek, yeah. So for that, 
I probably take more than for when I bake under my eyes. Because you want that nice, sharp, airbrushed line. It does look really good when you dust it off after it's been sitting for a little bit. Highlight my favorite part of makeup. Yes, I'm gonna be using the highlighter I made in my other video, which is mixing all my highlighters together. And it is this little number right here. A nice rose gold peachy pink custom made highlighter. I use these three brushes here. These two are real. This is a Real Techniques fan brush that I use for the bridge of my nose. And this is actually a setting brush, so probably for under the eyes. But I use this to highlight my cheekbones. And I use this paint brush, which I renovated transformed into a makeup brush for the tip of my nose and I'll just take the first I start off with the tip so I'll take the paint fan brush and just apply it right on the tip in a little circular padding motion then I'll take this fan brush from Real Techniques and apply to the center of the bridge of my nose so sometimes I'll blend the, the tip of the nose a little bit and back down to the bridge. Sometimes I'll add a little more. And then I move on to the setting brush, aka my highlighting brush. And I'll just tap, 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 rub, but rub. Sometimes you gotta pick it up more. But then I still tap off the excess. So I can apply more, duh. <laughs> so then I'll tap, tap, tap on the cheekbones. And I try to keep it in this one concentrated area, literally just right here, not too much on the cheek or not too high up. Because I did use to apply it too high and it didn't look right. It looks pretty crazy. So I keep it right in this concentrated area and sometimes I'll even bring it right here on the eyelid to keep it there. At this point, I will dust off the baking. And it just gives a nice cleaned up effect opposed to if you didn't bake under there, it, kind of, it might kind of look harsh because your bronzer or contour might be too low, so that will help clean it up. So a nice tip for you if you didn't know that. These are the brushes I use for eyeshadow. I'll use this blending brush here, this little detail brush to smudge the lower lash line with, this angled brush for the outer corners, and this is another blending brush. And I'll also use the paint fan brush to highlight underneath the eyebrow. I didn't think of a look. Since the lipstick I'm gonna be applying is going to be a mixture of all these, of all the ABH lip palettes, so definitely watch this video to see the process of that. You're obviously gonna see, see it applied in this video, but watch for the process. Okay, I use this Urban Decay eyeshadow primer potion in the shade Enigma. So I'll take this blending brush right here, and this is like my favorite crease color. Um, it's called Faith. It's this mid-toned brown, like it's not too light or dark. It's right here. I'll just sweep it in there, dust off the excess, and apply. Also at this point, I'll have my nude liner, which, fun little fact for you, it opens your eyes. So if you use black all the time and wonder why your eyes look small, that's probably why. So nude just opens the whole eyes, the eyes up all the way. Because white 
it's too harsh so I mean if you want that harsh look go for white but nude is the best option for anybody besides lashes it's just gonna open your eyes up and inner corner highlight of course can't forget that so I don't know if you can tell but um yes it does open my eyes up this is definitely not the best I can do better um but it's not the worst either, right? <laughs> I think it looks okay. And blend. I don't know what this is called, like a halo kind of crease, kind of. So before I forget, I'll use the fan brush and actually use it wet. So instead of wetting the eyeshadow, I'll just actually wet the brush. Now, now I'll go in with the highlighter that I use under my eyebrows as well. So I just take some there and apply it under my eyebrows. Um, just saying, this brush is like perfect for under the eyebrows because it fits right there and it's a little bit curved too so it caters to the shape that curved shape right underneath your brow bones taking the Lorac Gold palette which looks like this and see I'm just gonna pack on unedited which is this one in the corner the darkest one on the inner corners and outer corners So now I'm going to take the best color in here, which is called Unlocked. It's this nice gold that I've used the most. And I'm going to spray that also and apply it to the lids. So I use this Pixie setting spray all the time. And the next step, as you might have guessed, is mascara. And my favorite at the moment is by CoverGirl. It's called the Super Sizer. So I'm gonna use these Ardell Mega Volumes, which they add a lot of volume. Oh, I also use this duo glue, the dark tone. Not too much, not too little. So as we can see, there is a vast difference when we compare my natural lashes with these false lashes. So here's the final get ready with me look. Just want to say my hair actually looks way better than this when it dries, but it's wet right now because I just applied product. So I mean, you can still see the curl to it, but when it dries, it just becomes very voluminous and better looking than this. So just in case you think it looks weird, but um, this is the final look. So watch my other video to see the process of creating this lipstick. And thank you so much for watching. Like if you liked it, comment, and subscribe for more. Bye.